Ok, thank you everybody, you can start. Uh, ok, good afternoon everyone and uh, uh, welcome to this uh, 21th uh, UX talk. Um, this is a uh, lot of first time in these UX talks today because this is the first after the 20. Um, this is the first in English, so on English, so sorry for uh, all Ok, welcome to our guests and friends, because this is also the first one with our students of the Master of User Experience uh, Psychology and also the students of Experience Design uh, courses. Uh, so um, the UX Talk is an event that started uh, many years ago now and uh, that uh, try to, uh, let's say, deepen some um, elements that are emerging in the discipline of the UX. In particular, um, this evening, we will discuss about uh, a sort of uh, blending action that is uh, happening throughout uh, the you know, technological innovation uh, inside the world of transportation design. So, and uh, where we will discuss about the new role of user experience in transportation design. Because we live in an ever-changing world and uh, we uh, believe that today, I think the new dimension of user experience and the new dimension of design is the hybridization of the profile. For that reason, this UX talk that we was mainly devoted only to UX designer is today um, realized also in collaboration with the transportation and automobile design master. So uh, I will go throughout the room. I'm Venanzio Arquilla. I am the director of the Experience Design Academy. I will ask to all the attendees to turn off the webcam and turn off the microphone and uh, also to keep note for, um, and, uh, about your question for uh, the final question and answer session because this usually is one of the most relevant part of the question. Not because our guests are not so interesting, but because we are here also to cover your uh, interests and your questions derived by the uh, stimuli that will arrive from, your, from our guests. Uh, the idea is to try to be positive from what we can do in this, uh, in this period, but also proactive. So this idea is to cover the next two years uh, discussing in a relevant topic and also visualizing uh, a way in which the future will connect together design and also, uh, let's say, transportation design and user experience. Uh, so I hope you will uh, hear us and also I hope you will be connected by YouTube. Uh, I was discussing about the first times in this uh, UX talk. Another first time is our uh, streaming in YouTube and also this is this seems to be one of the most frequented uh, talks uh, ever. So I think this is uh, only the starting of a new era of our talk. Uh, as Experience Design Academy, we have a lot of channel and I think uh, you, you know this channel because you are uh, subscribed to the event, but uh, please uh, follow us on uh, Instagram, on Twitter, on Medium if you wanna be updated. After the talk, we will have a new medium on this topic, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, where you can review the talk and also you can deepen some concepts that are uh, emerging on the uh, talk. Um, we, as Experience Design Academy, uh, deal with the two different uh, process and program of uh, uh, learning that are uh, both of them uh, going on in their uh, actual edition. So the I, um, educational courses in user experience design uh, that is now to the 10th edition. And I will welcome and I will uh, say hello to all the students coming from the UXD. Ciao ragazzi. And then uh, the first edition of the master in uh, UX and psychology. Uh, hello to everyone, the students coming from uh, um, um, joint edition master between Universita Cattolica and uh, Politecnico di Milano, where the director are uh, me and Professor um, Andrea Gaggioli. Uh, Andrea, uh, um, happy birthday also because uh, today is uh, your birthday. And this is a good opportunity also to share knowledge in between the groups. Um, maybe in the next future, this event will go back 
in a sort of real blended edition, maybe with some presents, and also because at the end of this event, usually there were some happy hours and, uh, uh, let's say, a beer or a drink. But okay, everyone maybe can do this at home, and we will do our best to make your uh, presence here, um, let's say, the most interesting and relevant for your uh, uh, career and your future, and also to look into new opportunity. And these opportunities are connected about our new our partnership with the Master in Transportation and Automobile Design. Um, I think there is a few days to uh, enroll to the new edition of the Master, and uh, is uh, three years now that we as Experience Design Academy collaborate with the Master, and we take, a, a let's say, a module in Experience Design in Transportation, and we think that this can be one of the uh, point of the future for the, um, for the profession and for the activities related to the experience design. And I will thank uh, first our guests that are Antonio Grillo. Uh, okay, Antonio, this is the first time that you come here as a Tangity designer, right? Because you were from Digital Entity last time that we met here, right? Uh, yes, same company, different brands. So yeah. uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Venanzio, for inviting me. Yes, uh, I'm a UX and Service Design Director at Tangity. Tangity is a quite new brand, even though formerly known as Digital Entity. We changed brand recently uh, because uh, our experience is changed uh, and we are scaling up globally. At the moment, uh, before we were just in Rome, Milan and uh, and um, Treviso, and now we are scaling up in uh, uh, all across the world. So thank you very much for inviting me. Okay, thank you, Antonio, to be here and also to share with us uh, your experience worldwide in relation to this topic. And uh, secondly, but that will start first, uh, uh, an edit couple. So Flora Gaetani, that is a communication manager of the Master of Transportation Automobile Design, and also a good friend and also colleague and designer, car designer. So you are out of the box here. So welcome in the world of UX. Uh, this is uh, Inon uh, Rosen, uh, that is a project leader from ACA. So uh, I will leave you the floor, guys. Uh, I, I only have one thing to add. So I'm Venancio Arquila and I will be here uh, all, the, all day long, as, as uh, people say. Uh, I will moderate also the, the last part of the, the talk, but also uh, Gianluca Brugnoli will join us uh, later on also to take part to the discussion uh, time. So uh, I will leave you the floor, Flora and uh, Inon, and you can uh, present yourself and do your presentation and uh, make visible this future scenario about new way of integrating mobility and UX. Thank you, guys. And, Thank you, Venezia. Thank you, Venanzio. Yeah, um, my name yes, is Flora Gaetani. Thank you for inviting us to this, uh, to this talk. And I greet also my co-speaker, Inon Rosen. Uh, and I will give you the floor in just uh, one minute. Ah, uh, you can present yourself also, Inon. <laughs> yes, hi, guys. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Venanzio, for inviting me this evening. And uh, thank you, Flora. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, it's the first time for me and um, I'm really happy. And uh, also greetings to all the students that uh, follow us tonight. Um, so please, Flora. Um. Yeah, I'm just... Um, just a minute. Okay, here I am. Uh, yeah, uh, I am, uh, the, as, uh, as Venanzio said, I'm the communication manager of Master, uh, of Master TAD, of Master in Transportation and uh, on Automobile Design. This is uh, uh, the, the acronym of Master TAD. Is, uh, this master is a Politecnico di Milano master run by Polydesign Consortium as uh, um, the Master in User Experiences. Um, he's a master, uh, he uh, has a long story. Uh, Professor Fosso Brevi is, uh, uh, is, uh, is the director and uh, uh, inside this master, um, we grant uh, 60 CTS um, and you uh, can attend this master after the bachelor. So it's a first level specializing master course. 
Um, this year we, we will conclude the 12th edition of the master with a, um, with a total of 171 students enrolled. So uh, this is, is a very, um, no, it's all the master, but it's quite uh, in the 2019, we reached the goal of 10 years of master and we celebrate uh, with uh, this, um, this anniversary with, uh, with an exhibition that was our last exhibition in presence because uh, last year uh, we did another typology of exhibition and this was an exhibition um, where it has been possible to have a global idea of uh, what happens uh, all, uh, all this year. Uh, I was, I'm just uh, saying what is Master Tab and last year uh, for the pandemic we provide a new way of doing a graduation day uh, and the showcase that was uh, all uh, virtual. Uh, we close we we close the eleventh edition with an online event uh, uh, created together with the Car Design News. That is a um, very important blog, international blog in the field of car design. Um, and also, also Master Tad do some talk. Uh, the focus of this talk uh, that we name Tad Talks, uh, just to be like Ted Talks, uh, something like that. <laughs> uh, car design inspiring idea is uh, is the um, is something related, obviously, to the car design culture. Uh, so we speak not only with car designer, but uh, also to uh, people engaged with the car design field. Uh, and the next, uh, our next uh, talk will be with uh, uh, Lowy Vermsher, Vermirsch. I don't know if I'm pronounced, the pronunciation was good. Uh, there is a, who is the founder and creative director of Grand Studio. There is a society and a company very, um, um, that um, define itself as a mobility researcher and design studio. So not only a mobility, uh, a design studio, but also a mobility researcher studio. So it's very interesting in my opinion, also for you and also for your um, future work, uh, maybe to listen to a man that uh, can vision some future, and, and we see some of one of these, uh, one of their work uh, uh, during uh, this uh, presentation. Um, so um, let's go on. Uh, so how we met? Because uh, in reality, uh, uh, Inon and I we start working together inside uh, a research. Uh, program the name was base 5g and it was a, a, a little strange acronym because is uh, base means broadband and interface and service for smart environment enabled by 5g technologies so very long and very strange acronym uh, but this was um, was a realize uh, with the um, uh, with the Regione Lombardia, with Union Europea, and uh, uh, the main uh, the main focus of this project are three: are first of all uh, designing uh, design of uh, services based uh, on intelligent environment. The second is uh, the idea of a vertical integration of 5G technology with an uh, with the IoT platform to support advanced services, and at the end. Uh, uh, the, the development of simple and user interface. Uh, this inside uh, this, uh, this project uh, is uh, run with the five typology of uh, field, inside five typology of experimentation of field. And one is the one we, uh, we will speak about today because uh, uh, this presentation uh, started from uh, the very starting point of this research in which uh, we uh, provide a research on state of art uh, of an analysis of uh, what is uh, now, what it means now start vehicle, what it means uh, start mo uh, smart mobility and what it means uh, um, uh, for car manufacturer, but not only, for, uh, for example, from uh, 
uh, some vision of big companies involved in mobility, but not only uh, car manufacturer, and how the use of this 5G uh, connection could influence the mobility of uh, the future uh, of the future of our cities, uh, and also. Mm, speaking about, for example, autonomous driving, that uh, is something that we more and more we are starting thinking about and uh, listening to. So this was uh, uh, the main focus of, uh, of uh, this uh, project. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. So this is, for example, uh, we can see an example starting from this point of view and this idea that uh, inside uh, our uh, research uh, we want uh, to highlight. This is uh, an example of a scenario visualization uh, that we found during our research uh, in where we see how uh, not only self-driving self car, for example, in this case, but in general, a vision of a city, of a smart city, um, um, in, in which uh, a smart use of transport can be declined into different services. So, for example, I don't know, uh, a, a animal postman here that uh, with the Amazon uh, box is uh, uh, going out from another typology of uh, mobility, uh, but also, I don't know, drone, but also uh, people mover or taxi. So something that is usual to see now. And uh, we can also see something related to, for example, a different use of, uh, uh, of cities. So for example, some areas dedicated to um, the mixed mobility and some other areas, uh, for example, dedicated to uh, just to um, uh, just uh, to um, self driving uh, self driving mobility. So this is an example of what we found uh, inside our our um, our research program. Uh, one of the main partner partner is uh, uh, Vodafone that pro uh, they provide the architecture. So the architecture. Uh, and the structure of uh, 5G connection. Uh, and here we can see, for example, uh, a vision uh, uh, that uh, provide Vodafone on how uh, the 5G connection can enable, it can uh, highlight and can, uh, um, uh, we can have a more uh, sure uh, streets and more sure, um, um, like uh, connection with the cars and with the, with all of the surroundings in our in our in our cities. Uh, so, but now uh, I see. Let's get to the heart of the problem because uh, I leave the floor to my co co co. Um, um, I can I say co speaker. <laughs> In on speaking about uh, something more related to the car field, right? Non? Yes, thank you, Flora. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. So, um, yeah, I wanted to uh, start with this picture because I think it's an emblem for um, um, the argument because uh, we see how uh, there was a time, this is a, a level zero uh, car, so no automation here. Uh, but it was a time where people were really um, emotionally attached to the vehicles. So we have all these memories uh, from nice uh, vacations with the family in the car. So the car was a status symbol. It was um, a way to be free and, um, and travel and move. Uh, everybody wanted to have one. So it was kind of like the, the golden age for, uh, for car manufacturers. Um, and uh, still nobody talked about uh, experience design uh, yet. Um, but um, now we see um, an evolution of society where we live in uh, metropolitan cities, in big cities, and young people are not interested in cars anymore. They don't uh, want to own one. Uh, so actually we are uh, in, in a transit uh, from, um, basically a product that we need to own to a, to a service. So um, the car actually needs to uh, attract the user to be easy to use, to be intuitive in order to uh, 
to the user to come back and use the the product again. Uh, so let's see a little bit of uh, the evolution of how autonomous driving actually affects the interior of the car. Um, so we start uh, with a level two. Uh, basically, level two means uh, semi-automatic system. Uh, these, uh, this is like a photography of what's going on uh, in today's uh, cars. This is like the top class. This is the best products that we have. Uh, on the market today that have uh, this technology of, um, let's say, uh, the, the beginning of autonomous driving cars. Uh, and we can see this is a very traditional layout. This uh, looks like every car that uh, we know is just, uh, you know, um, full of uh, screens and buttons to show us that it's a technological, uh, advanced technological object. Um, so basically here, uh, we are still driving. The car has uh, some uh, technologies that only assist the driving. Okay. Uh, if we move on to level three, um, you can see that uh, we have a little bit less cars today that uh, provide uh, this kind of technology. Also because here we start to move into uh, autonomous uh, technology. But uh, there is a question of responsibility. So uh, until um, level two, the the, dri the driver is in control and the driver is responsible. And from level four on, uh, the car is responsible and the car is in control. Level three is kind of like the middle ground. Um, and so many manufacturers believe that we will pass from two directly to four um, um, because of this uh, problem of responsibility. Uh, so still we see that uh, this... Um, phase is only uh, uh, a kind of transition and we get the same architecture of the vehicle just with uh, bigger screens. Um, if you move on to, to level four, uh, so here basically uh, the car is mostly autonomous in most conditions. So we still have the possibility to drive the vehicle. We still have a steering wheel, we still have the pedals. Uh, but it's not necessary to drive. So the car is able to drive itself. And you can see already a little bit more freedom in the design, uh, a little bit less restrictions. And we have this effect where the, the steering wheel can actually disappear um, and um, we can um, use the space for, uh, for other things. We, we, we become passengers and not active drivers uh, until we reach the, the final level which is the level five, um, which be the car becomes completely autonomous. We don't have even the possibility to, to drive. There is no steering wheel. And then we can see how um, the car becomes an extension of the, of the home, an extension of the office. Um, we are um, merely passengers. Uh, we are not um, drivers anymore. Um, so this opens up a real new era for for car design, uh, also because of uh, other technological events. Um, because um, uh, if we think that uh, the the propulsion can be inside of the wheels, uh, so the architecture of the car can change. Uh, we get much more freedom. Uh, so. Uh, now we can see in the next slides, uh, we brought uh, some visions of uh, different manufacturers, how they uh, basically um, use this technology and how, uh, like, like we said, how we shift from, uh, from ownership to, to service. So this is the, the vision from, uh, from Smart, from Mercedes-Benz uh, Smart. Um, so this is um, a level five completely autonomous vehicle. Um, now we, we can uh, we can see the video. So we, we have different themes uh, treated in this vehicle. Um, for example, you can see um, uh, already um, a different ratio of uh, of body and glass. So there is much more glass. Uh, so you can enjoy much more the the environment. Uh, and this glass can be frosted, so you get more privacy inside. Um, also, we have uh, a digital screen on the front of the vehicle, so the vehicle can communicate with the environment because there is no actual driver inside. So 
when the driver when the car wants to uh, signal uh, a pedestrian that he can cross the street uh, he can see the screen also um, the car is um, is thought and programmed to be a very social vehicle so it actually knows uh, because it's connected to your social uh, media uh, it knows uh, the route you you will take it knows your friends uh, your habits uh, the, the things you like and it can actually suggest um, a, a passenger that you can take with you uh, to your uh, destination and um, sorry um, um, it will it can suggest a, another passenger so um, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I had some disruptions in the office. Um, so um, when you are uh, with a passenger on board, it can suggest um, the music that you both like and it can uh, produce it in the car. It can show maybe uh, some sport events that you both like, uh, movies, uh, so you get uh, entertainment uh, as well. Um, so this is the vision of SMART and Next, we can see a completely different vision uh, from uh, BMW. And um, this is also treating uh, autonomous vehicle, completely autonomous vehicle, but in a complete different uh, uh, key. Um, basically here, BMW knows that, um, that people um, are not so, um, uh, relaxed yet with this technology of autonomous driving you know uh, uh, we still it's a new technology and uh, we still have to get used to it and we have to get comfort comfortable with it uh, so BMW designers wanted to create an environment which uh, will really let you feel um, relaxed and uh, and so they they wanted to create an interior that will be completely intuitive uh, so, as you can see, uh, we are talking about dematerialization thanks to technology. Uh, so, there are a lot of sophisticated technologies, but they are all uh, hidden. Um, and you can, the, the car actually recognizes uh, where you look at, and uh, you can just point with your finger to activate uh, um, some uh, menu options. Um, you can change the mode of the seating just by touching it, uh, touching the textile. Um, and um, again, we have this uh, huge glass that uh, can be uh, transparent or, or frosted, depends on uh, on your preferences. So you can see that um, how BMW actually um, shows us how important the interior gets uh, rather than the exterior in this case. It's uh, the exterior gets to be uh, just a, a box containing the interior. It's all about the, the experience in this case. Okay, so uh, we saw uh, how uh, different visions uh, of different car manufacturers. And I gave the word to Flora again. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, in 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 practical, we have uh, like an evolution of. Uh, thank you, thank you, Inan. Uh, an evolution of living uh, living space. Uh, uh, there is a change in the design of the interior, uh, which as a car design range increases. So level one, level two, level three, level four becomes more and more a living space and less uh, an interior of a car. And so uh, designers uh, are. Uh, uh, we, we ask a designer to change completely the interior and the layout uh, of the interior of a car because it doesn't matter uh, which, which is the direction of the movement of the car uh, is not important uh, really uh, maybe in some cases there are some cars that uh, they change the direction in one direction or in another one they don't have an uh, a rear or a, 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 a part that is going in one direction. Um, uh, and, and so the interior is something that is uh, completely changing, is completely changing, uh, starting from the user experience, because uh, in this case, uh, you can concentrate your, all your design, uh, uh, design uh, 
part on the computer on on the user experience. So uh, we changed the design of interior design. We 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 find in living room in workspace. Uh, um, maybe we need to share space with other people, or maybe we don't need to share. So we share our the space with other people, but uh, uh, we share. Uh, we, we, we needed to divide because uh, maybe also in this period uh, we speak about a lot of social distancing, uh, but uh, we know that the sharing uh, will be one solution. So also the layout inside the car must be divided because uh, maybe you will share the space, but you don't want to have any touch. So you don't you need to have a social distancing from another one. So. Uh, we um, we are using the interior as a space uh, as a space that you can uh, uh, also divide it in different uh, in different ways and uh, uh, designing a car living space uh, uh, does not only involves uh, for example uh, uh, company dealing with the uh, interfaces uh, but also for example in this case is uh, the um, uh, the same company uh, we will have uh, the speech uh, uh, with uh, so Grand Studio of Turin uh, decided uh, need to uh, design a um, grammar uh, seat so it's a grammar it's a it's a company uh, that uh, produce uh, seats for cars so when the grammar asked uh, Grand Studio to 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 design this uh, um, Grand Studio answer not uh, um, thinking about only the object to design, but first of all, uh, to put uh, this object inside uh, an interior and uh, to work uh, with the living space of this interior, thinking about the experience of people inside this interior and maybe the, the, the um, the product, uh, uh, the designing product is something put in a second place because of that. So uh, the user experience is uh, absolutely in, in, in the interior car, in the, in the interior design of autonomous driving is something put absolutely in the center of, uh, um, of the work. Okay, so with the, the autonomous. Another, and also in the outside. Yeah. <laughs> Another trend that we see, sorry, Flora. Um, uh, this is a work that we that comes from uh, design universities, actually. And uh, this is like a, kind of a, an anticipation of what we will see in the future, because these guys work with professional designers. They make their, um, their thesis uh, working uh, closely with the car companies. But this is a way to express kind of like the, the future uh, and the direction that, uh, that the industry uh, is following. And we can see how uh, cars basically don't uh, keep, like we said, uh, this uh, classic ratio that we know today uh, that the car has uh, two thirds of body and uh, one third of greenhouse of, uh, of glass. Uh, and uh, we kind of deconstruct the, the car because of technologies because the car can drive themselves because we we can have uh, digital screens that show us um, what we need to see um, so actually uh, this will affect a lot of course the the experience inside the vehicle um, in this way and um, we can already see uh, in this case um, it's a hyperloop designed by bmw uh, design um, and in this case, uh, we can already see a vehicle this, which is completely uh, without glass uh, because this vehicle uh, is a high speed train running inside the tube. Uh, so basically, the designers here uh, wanted to give us, give us a, a, a nice feeling, uh, not to, to feel like um, we are in, um, in a small um, in a, in a small pod uh, driving fast uh, and actually they want us to feel calm um, so they use uh, a lot of space between the seats uh, um, and they use lights to communicate uh, so this is a big part of the of the experience and um, so this is a little bit um, 
yeah to to show how um uh, technologies actually uh, are the ones that uh, that make these changes um that 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 we saw so far uh, and a little bit of what's uh, what's coming so um this is um um uh, Jeff Han, uh, it's a famous uh, researcher uh, from 2006. Uh, he he was excited and he showed his new technology, uh, and this was just fresh out of a, of a lab in a u university. Um, this was basically um, a project that uh, created um, a, a multi-touch capacitive screen. Uh, and this was exciting, but uh, nobody knew what the application will be. Um, you know, he was just zooming in and zooming out with his fingers, like we all know now. But this was like the first time somebody ever did that. You know, he was just designing an interface without knowing exactly um, the implication. And, and um, uh, Steve Jobs saw that. And one year later, we all had it uh, on the iPhone. And now it looks like iPhone has been here forever, but it's only uh, 14 years ago that uh, we started uh, this this trip, let's call it. So you can see how a technology can really revolutionize and disrupt uh, an industry. And of course, this uh, happens in car design as well. Uh, so we, we did a little bit of um, research around uh, technology and to see what's uh, what's happening. So this is a little bit an overview of what's uh, today um, in, in the car industry. Uh, so you can see, for example, uh, Mercedes-Benz with the uh, NVIDIA uh, collaborating. What, the, what they are doing is super interesting because they are saying a little bit like Tesla is doing already um, that the car is not something that uh, I sell uh, in the in the shop and then um, one year later the object is obsolete it's old uh, we have new technologies and you have to buy a new car uh, they they say okay we you, you will buy the car but we guarantee that for 10 years we will keep engineers uh, working on the same model so you can always upgrade and download uh, new applications for your car and um, have basically the car you love but with the latest technology um, so the car is becoming a digital product. It becomes really complex. You can see on the right chart, the amount of complexity of uh, code lines in the software. You have the uh, Volkswagen uh, CEO uh, talking about how if Volkswagen doesn't shift uh, its mentality to become um, a software house rather than a car manufacturer, they will not survive uh, in the future. So this is a, a big change for, uh, for the automotive. Um, so as we said, uh, we wanted to show some uh, some new technologies, uh, some exciting technologies. Uh, this is already something that um, is uh, reality today, actually. So this will, will we will start to see this uh, a lot in in cars already. Uh, so uh, like we said, technology helps us uh, dematerialize um, the, the the interior, and so a lot of um, buttons are disappearing uh, and we will start to have uh, surfaces uh, around us that we can touch that we can interact with that will give us uh, feedback uh, directly um, next technology uh, it's even more futuristic i think and really exciting um, basically this uh, these researchers from university are working uh, around these uh, sensors that uh, work in a 3D space and they can sense in real time uh, the movement of my hand, the position in a 3D space, in a three-dimensional space. So imagine this uh, could be uh, the future car and the car knows exactly the position of my hand, the movement I'm doing, and it gives me uh, feedback. So in case now, I don't think you hear the, the sound of this video, but basically uh, you, you get uh, sound feedback just to understand that the vehicle actually uh, received your command. So this is the same as I see it. It's the same like Jeff Han in 2006 showing us um, this movement, you know. Uh, so this is the future. This is how we will interact with objects. We will be completely free 
uh, just uh, making our movements, uh, talking with the car, uh, the car um, speaks to us. So it will be just like interacting with a person. Um, next technology that I find really uh, exciting as well, uh, it's from Disney Research. And basically they wanted also to give the user a feedback uh, that he can sense in a 3D space without touching anything. And I think this is a important theme as well because we talked about um, uh, sharing mobility. We talked about um, uh, self-driving cars. So you go into a car and um, it's like a public transportation. So you don't probably want to touch any surface uh, because of um, um, sanitizing issues. So uh, the idea that you can um, give commands to the car directly in the air and receive feedback um, without touching anything, you, you can feel uh, a response from the car that uh, you actually actuated the, uh, the command. Uh, so in this case, they do it by just uh, throwing air bubbles in the air and you put your, your hand and on your skin, you feel uh, like you are really touching something and you can see how the sensor is really sensing the movement. So um, so we, we can get a taste a little bit of the trends and to see how um, how cars can um, can evolve in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for listening and for your time. I pass the word for Flora. Okay, thank you Non. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, and speaking about the master because I'm uh, I'm a faculty member of the master and and I'm, and I'm working with students at the very last part uh, of uh, of master. So I'm helping them uh, uh, to visualize their uh, final idea uh, uh, at the very end of the master. And here I I I show you some example of. Uh, um, uh, thesis, so of uh, project thesis, uh, in which I try to highlight uh, the part that deal with uh, obviously with the user experience and user interface design. Obviously, our focus is not only the interior, it's also the exterior uh, and all uh, the work uh, on a car uh, on a car design. Uh, project so uh, is something that in some cases uh, uh, is is just little in our work but uh, because also we have a three year collaboration with uh, user experience uh, design academy uh, we start putting also for this reason a lot of user experience and user interface inside the project uh, and also because uh, uh, there are quite all uh, level four or level five uh, um, uh, self-driving cars, so it's very important. It's something that you can't, uh, you you cannot think uh, out of uh, also user experience. So in this case, these are the three projects we we show. Uh, last year, so is uh, TAD uh, 11, is the 11th edition of Master TAD, is the project of 2020. And uh, this is Bulwark, uh, that was a pickup design. Uh, okay, the three project was uh, all uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, the year 2050. So it was something related to the future. Uh, so in, in the vision of Bulwark, uh, uh, we are in um, in uh, is a is a uh, like um, um, yeah is a is a pickup for people living in the wildlands uh, is something with two steering wheels but we, with the, the idea of uh, uh, co uh, of uh, something that is driving and a co driver because it's something always uh, in um, uh, places with uh, some danger so it depends on. Uh, what is the first to take the steering wheel to, to start uh, moving uh, on. And so also in this case, as we see, we have uh, uh, some uh, um, user interface connected to maybe some situation of danger and uh, some holographic figure to figure out what happening so we don't uh, see nothing outside the car. Um, the next one uh, that is, um, um, BMW Hyla. Uh, 
uh, is uh, thinking about is an, an amphibious vehicle, uh, very light. Uh, so just for one person, uh, think it with uh, the idea that uh, the um, coastal uh, uh, cities like such as Amsterdam or such as, I don't know, Venice can be, um, can, 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 uh, we, can yeah, <laughs> will be characterized by uh, 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 improving the level of, ha of water and so having the streets that are not no more all uh, uh, just um, there are uh, the street with the water, so it's uh, something related to, to the the problem of having water inside the uh, inside our cities. And also in this case, we can see the project of the user interface. Um, and uh, we don't have any steering wheels. We have like a cloche and uh, something that can be also interchange uh, because um, some people can uh, be able to move just to the right hand and not the left and something uh, something like this. The third one is the Lagonda Aura. Uh, it's a premium car and here we can see something similar to what Grand Studio did for uh, the seating. So analyzing uh, uh, the user experience inside the car uh, and with three different possibility of changing the layout. So, for example, for work uh, with uh, an holographic uh, uh, view of something we are speaking about uh, or relaxing or like uh, leisure. So having this little table uh, uh, in front of us uh, with a glass of wine. So it's all uh, connecting. Also, the seats are quite different, uh, the, the first two from this one, other in the opposite side. Uh, this was uh, another idea of sharing mobility is uh, the, the, in the um, 10th edition of uh, Master Tad is Audi Chrysalis. And the basic idea was that, okay, uh, yeah, we are going to uh, an idea of sharing mobilities, but maybe sometimes some people don't want to share all. So it's the idea that uh, um, this part, the central part is something, uh, um, uh, is something uh, in property, it's not sharing, and you share just the engine, and the engine are the four wheels that can be wheels or no, can be other stuff to move, uh, no? So the idea was uh, uh, that you don't have uh, all uh, the, 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 um, the transportation, that all the transport that is uh, shared, but just uh, some parts. And also in this case, uh, it's a full autonomous, so, so a level five, you don't have steering wheels, uh, but you have uh, holographic view and the idea of knowing when, for example, you, you, re, you will reach your, uh, your destination. Uh, here is a very interesting project, uh, is uh, the eighth edition of, um, I'm finishing, uh, Venantio, <laughs> is the eighth edition of, uh, of Master Tad, is Audi for Senses, is very interesting because it's uh, an interior of a car for uh, uh, imp visually impaired uh, people. So it's uh, interesting because uh, uh, the user interface is not something, it's absolutely not something visual, but it's something related to the smell, the hearing, uh, the sight and the touch, it's something related to all that is not visual. So it was a very interesting project uh, because it was something very um, far from our idea of a car for, for impaired uh, impaired. Uh, um visually people so i remember i let okay i it's uh, this is our na next uh, tad talks i know that we are just a little bit long so i say only that if you want for further information uh, uh, we are in the social at the tad polini and i'm finished <laughs> Okay. Thank you, thank you, Flora. <laughs> thank you, Inon. Uh, this thank is not to, much, to, to make your pressure, but just to respect the the, the timing, uh, also because Antonio mm -hmm. is uh, ready. Uh, okay, thank you for this. Uh, let's say huge vision about the evolution of the uh, car design and um, 
there's a lot, big overlap, Antonio, in between these two disciplines now, and also is the technology, are the surfaces, uh, are this new kind of environment. But I think I really appreciate the, um, the example made by Inon about the technology that was uh, on the, so related to the iPhone. And he said, so it's Steve Jobs that had the idea how to use it. So please, Antonio, what are you doing with this kind of technology, which are, which are the new ideas and how we can evolve in these terms of evolution, also dealing with the user research. So are the user able to understand this new opportunity and how they are thinking about integrating with this technology. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, I'm in the position tonight to answer to all the questions you mentioned, but... Uh, well, sorry, okay. can, you, can, you, can you take the mic off, Maurizio, please? Okay. Seems that uh, someone is angry. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, let me share the, 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 the screen. Just one second. Can you see my screen? Mm, not yet. Now? Okay, and now yes. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so I'm really glad again to be part of this panel and thanks Venanzi for inviting me again. For the next half an hour, uh, we are going to explore a case study related to the topic of this evening, uh, more precisely how to reshape the relationship between riders and uh, scooters, so two wheelers. Um, I, I did a, a super brief introduction before. Uh, I'm the Accent Service Design Director at Tangity, and um, I've got an international experience uh, working across multiple uh, industries, uh, banking, retail, healthcare, transportation, and just moved back to Italy less than three years ago uh, because I, I felt in love with an ambitious project that today is named Tangity. Um, I was also asked to create the inclusive design course at uh, Laurea Magistrale of Politecnico di Milano. And uh, I'm quite honored about this actually. Um, so I'm not sure whether everyone knows who Tangity is. It's a network of design studio, as I mentioned before, part of Entity Data, our ambitions to design solutions with a positive impact on society. Uh, so we are in London, Milan, Rome, Venice, Munich, Tokyo, and opening in Shanghai, and more is to come. Basically, we are focused on business design, service design, and product design. 2019, we invested in Star Global, which is a global product design company. And recently we have acquired a company specialized in product engineering and industrial design. So basically we have the possibility to accompany our clients from strategic phase until the, uh, the product engineering phase. So, um, during the preparation of this talk, I was, uh, um, uh, thinking to myself, <clears throat> why are we talking about UX and automotive? So why UX is so relevant for uh, automotive? I'm not sure that I have found the right answer, but uh, I'm keen to share my thoughts, my point of view, and to listen uh, uh, your uh, yours later on. So um, I think that there are several reasons behind the rise of uh, UX in automotive. First one is because of UX, uh, uh, um, because uh, UX in automotive is relevant simply because uh, vehicles are becoming connected products and uh, a mix of a physical and digital, uh, physical products with a digital soul, let's say. And this is this hybridization process uh, is pushing the boundaries of the status quo of the whole automotive sector. The merging of physical and digital car has been driven by electrification, connectivity, self-driving technology, and uh, other cutting edge technologies uh, that are uh, contributing to the transformation of the mobility sector in general. As a result, transportation vehicles are becoming nodes of the net uh, and potentially new touch points for services. And this is an, an example of what might happen when uh, advanced technologies meet cars. NEO, 
is a pioneer in China's premium electric vehicles market and Star Global, mentioned before, supported NIO for one of their most visionary ideas, the world first device to establish a trust between passengers and artificial intelligence. This artificial intelligence companion is named Nomi. It is considered a benchmark for emotional in-car artificial intelligence. It's already available on the market, by the way. Another reason why UX is becoming more and more relevant in automotive is because connected cars are reshaping the entire business. And as consequence, the strategic partnerships of the entire automotive system. This always happens when a physical product becomes a connected product. The entire ecosystem dramatically changes. As a result of this revolution, connected cars potentially become a platform for new services and revenue streams. And if you don't approach the challenge with a systemic view, the risk is that your product become just a bottleneck for both services and revenue streams. An example of how strategic, strategic partnership are changing in this scenario comes from uh, uh, NTT and Toyota. NTT is a Japanese global technology service provider, but it is also a telco company, the best telco in Japan, by the way. Together, they have found a positive mutual exchange in creating a, a partnership to test, experiment and learn about the massive automotive transformation driven by 5G, IoT, AI, and a lot of other technologies that we have already seen in the previous talk. Uh, they've created Woven City, which is a smart city based on three principles, human-centered, living lab, and always evolving. So the city has been built to accelerate the go-to market of cutting edge technology, capable to a solution, capable to create an harmonic, an harmonic relationship between people, nature and technology. So this is a great example of a, how important it is to have a systemic view in this sector and find new strategic alliance in order to navigate the complexity of this big transformation. Last but not least, another reason why it's relevant for automotive now, UX is relevant for automotive now, is because simply UX is about people and there are still people in the car and presumably there will be in the future as well. And people might become a potential user of services provided by connected cars. Starting from car owners that might be in the position to buy a new feature for his car, such as a subscription program for advanced self-driving feature, or enabling payment system for parking, or perhaps a combination with the advanced uh, self-driving feature, we could subscribe also an in-car smart office package, who knows? From the other side, family members might buy additional services related to the entertainment, like the uh, artificial intelligence companion we have seen in NeoCar before. So there are plenty of reasons why now, more than ever, UX matters in the automotive scenario. Now let's see a project that we have been doing with Star Global. Uh, we have been accompanying a global motor vehicle manufacturer to reshape the relationship between riders and scooters. Uh, the project is still ongoing and we are in the middle of a physical prototyping phase. Um, after this phase, we are going to move towards the product engineering phase. Unfortunately, I can't reveal the, any details regarding the client and the final solution because it's covered by NDA, uh, as you can imagine. But, Together, we will uh, discover all uh, the details, uh, the way we approach the, the challenge, the design phases, the tools, and all the lessons learned. Okay, let's uh, start uh, with this slide uh, 
putting together re relevant numbers about this project so far. One company for the end-to-end -end, from strategic design until the product engineering. Three uh, different uh, um, design teams working together as a unique team, Tangity, Star, uh, the design team of the client. Different prototypes to test the concept at different level of maturity. One patent related to a quite distinctive solution we have created, which is a brand new communication language to simplify and enhance the communication between rider and scooter. So we started facing uh, lots of challenge in, uh, this project, in this project. The client was uh, new and uh, we had to set up a brand new relationship, building trust and uh, finding the right communication level to understand each other. It was the first time working with uh, our partners from STAR. So let's say that building trust uh, was our main priority in the early phase of this project. Moreover, this project started just before the lockdown in March 2020. And soon after the client kickoff, the same week actually, uh, we went into lockdown. So we were forced to completely reshape our ways of work internally and uh, with the client as well. So we reshaped the activity plan, tools, uh, uh, all these issues were happening just during the most delicate phase of the relationship with the client, the beginning of the project. So we reacted very well. And I think that also thanks to the a full collaboration, comprehension and uh, flexibility, let's say from client side, I think that the, the lockdown for TNGT star and the client was a, one of the best team building exercises we would ever had made. So, as I mentioned before, we started our journey by framing the challenge with the client. So the initial ask was quite broad, as you can see, exploring the envisioning the future of two wheeled vehicles. So the first thing we have done was a running a framing workshop to better define the challenge. So. We were preparing this workshop in the Munich um, uh, studio, uh, visiting STAR. During this exercise, we were collecting uh, inspiration to find areas of interest, to share with the client and contextually discuss, validate and explore further some topics that are relevant for them. Our, our exercise was uh, informed by secondary research uh, market trend and uh, uh, also um, by uh, connecting dots canvas, which is uh, this is very simple canvas to foster um, that we utilize to foster creativity and diverge during the selection of the area of interest. When you start a new project, typically. Uh, these are research frameworks allows you to go beyond the market trends, competitor and comparable landscape schema. Uh, it provides you a wider source of inspiration such as nature, fantasy and arts. And uh, this is the tool in action. As you can see, within the comparable, you can see horse, for instance, that you can ride with your knees. A mono wheels uh, vehicle and uh, hang climbers and that were classified as barycentric UI as you have uh, to move your body to drive uh, those vehicles. So uh, there were lots of inspiration from nature as well. And believe it or not, the final solution for our new language that we had created was already included in this table and was inspired by an insect actually. <laughs> On the left side, uh, there is a mood board that uh, we have utilized to explore further uh, some dimension of uh, for, further dimension of the product. For instance, you can uh, find uh, um, indication about uh, the fact that the final solution might be a family of product instead of a single object and, and so on. So collecting uh, the insight from market trend, disc research and uh, connecting dots canvas, we end up with the 
the following areas of interest. So possibility to redesign the HMI, uh, possibility to improve safety, navigation language, the voice UI, uh, and providing an adaptive experience, providing more playfulness, as well as uh, exploring the, uh, the possibility of a connective uh, uh, scooter, uh, as well as providing, uh, exploring also the, the entertainment side. Uh, and so this list was meant to be utilized as a starting point for a, a client meeting to better define the scope of this project. So during the kickoff of this meeting, we run a, the uh, framing workshop. And so selecting one more area in, uh, of interest, deep in dive, uh, individuate opportunities for each criteria and understanding the actors related to the challenge as well as the possible broker, blockers and uh, uh, prioritize opportunities. Of, of, the workshop is a bit more articulated, but uh, there is no time to deep dive into much detail, but uh, happy to provide any details uh, later on. And uh, this is the results, uh, the result of uh, the workshop. As you can see, some areas were excluded, whilst uh, other areas were uh, further explored. And we have got also more clarity around the fact that uh, this product should be available in uh, four markets in Europe, Italy, Spain, Germany, and UK. So at this point, uh, once we have got more clarity around uh, the uh, area of interest uh, to explore, we start with the uh, user research to gain more uh, granularity uh, about the topic uh, distilled. So due to the fact that the solution was supposed to be available in different European countries, we were lever leveraging on uh, our network to adopt a distributed operational model. So setting up tools and vision globally, so distributing the research tools locally, gaining uh, the local flavor and uh, regroup uh, globally to distill uh, the results. Here you can have a, an overview of uh, the um, uh, audience we interviewed, uh, as well as the uh, process that was made up of a questionnaires, uh, routine scenario, uh, scooter uh, analysis, and uh, also very fine and engaging exercise, uh, which was the dream scooter building. In parallel, we, we were performing additional desk research with the, um, to deep dive into the selected areas of interest and gain more understanding. Um, as well as we were uh, collecting an internal view of the areas of interest uh, by interviewing some uh, stakeholders from our uh, client side. In the end of this exercise, we end up with two design challenges. After having uh, distilled the, the result from user research, desk research, and stakeholders interview, uh, the first challenge was uh, how might we provide an environmental awareness and uh, enhance the safety of uh, the driver. And the other design challenge was how might we make the riding experience assistive and increase engagement for uh, drivers. So how might we provide a kind of digital companion that uh, trains you to enhance and develop your driving style, let's say. So uh, this is a, um, th this was the starting point from uh, uh, for the ideation process. It was a completely uh, remote uh, based, of course. So um, deep uh, deep, di deep diving opportunity analysis, sketching out the personas related to the the scenarios sketching out uh, journeys uh, and uh, uh, highlighting pain points uh, and uh, running uh, ideation session related to the pain points and then uh, translating uh, the insights in uh, scenarios and storyboards that you can see here in this slide. And uh, so there was a, one scenario related to the new language that we have uh, uh, created uh, to provide the environmental awareness and to ride and improve the safety. Uh, the second scenario was a, a mobile application, uh, basically a companion um, that is meant to take care of uh, 
your driving style and skills. So uh, basically we have uh, tested the, the, uh, the scenarios uh, with client and users. Then we have uh, um, evolved those scenarios uh, in a more mature, uh, more advanced prototype by utilizing videos. And we tested the, with client and user, we amended all the uh, feedback and then uh, now we have uh, just realized the uh, physical prototype and uh, now the next steps uh, now we are in the beginning to test and collect inside and once we have got uh, all the feedback uh, we will move uh, towards the uh, product engineering so key learnings from uh, these uh, experience uh, in designing uh, a new product uh, in the automotive uh, sector. Um, uh, again, we have uh, consolidated uh, this uh, uh, piece of knowledge. Conversation is one of the most relevant weapon for designers. Yes, this is true for industrial designer in general and uh, for designer in general, but also and uh, mainly when uh, the product you are designing uh, has a, some digital soul. Uh, nowadays, designing a product is, is much more complex. Uh, uh, for, this for this reason, uh, a more diverse team is needed. You have uh, designers, tech experts, engineers, uh, all together with a different perspective and goals. So as a designer, your role is not only just to be a superstar, but to be a great team player, capable to put together a shared vision and to conduct the team to deliver the best solution. R&D and engineers around the design table during the ideation phase. Yes, why? Because in designing a product, any little uh, uh, choice might affect the product doability and marketability, simply because the shape you have chosen is too expensive and out of the market or uh, the functionality you have designed can't be realized by the suppliers and that your client is using and so on. So there are lots of constraints that uh, might affect uh, your idea. So there is a huge difference between a beautiful concept and a beautiful concept that works actually. In my opinion, as designer, you should go for the second choice. Systemic view, we said several times during this talk, is essential um, to adopt a systemic view. For connected products, you can't design a product in, in isolation without taking, talking about the services and potentially the business model that might be enabled. Most important things uh, are the last two one. Huh? Responsibility. This is the most important things that the designer should consider when designing a product. And also, uh, this is mainly valid also for car and automotive in general. The majority of mistakes that we see around us are design mistakes. Pollution, plastic issues, and so on are design mistakes. In the past, we were not good in adopting a systemic view capable to analyze the consequence of a our solution over time. And uh, we didn't set the right KPIs to measure the result of uh, our solution. On this topic, I, one year ago, I've written an article named Why Design Good Experience is No Longer Enough. So um, last but not least, mobility is like water. Yes, definitely true. Tra transportation in general hugely impacts on our habits. Mobility is the lifeblood of our cities and is absolutely essential for urban life. We can't utilize new technology to make transportation. We can utilize new technology to make transportation more inclusive, mainly for economic standpoint. That's why it's so relevant to design systems, not just products. And that's all from my side. Hope that we were in time, on time. So, Perfectly, thank you. Antonio, always, you are always perfect also on time. So 
uh, you completely uh, let's say answer to some of my question or maybe to uh, most relevant of my questions. So uh, thank you. And uh, okay, this is an opposite or may maybe uh, this is a view uh, seen from a UX design perspective, but also in a complete uh, let's say project. And also I think. Uh, uh, our students will appreciate that uh, all the methodology that you, uh, let's say, uh, name it, and also the process that you follow it is exactly the process that we are uh, trying to transfer to them also uh, for their future career. So I think both of you agree about the, 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 the value of the integration of the competencies and also this, uh, uh, let's say, transversal view. You discussed about conversation that, uh, you know, it's a topic that to me, it's uh, quite relevant. Also, we have done a PhD uh, with Ilaria Vitali that is closing her PhD in this conversational design. So uh, what means for you conversation in terms of uh, um, experience and how the designer today have to uh, wider uh, their, uh, let's say, skill and knowledge? You say that today is more complex than before to be designer. So you need to have uh, how many uh, skill and knowledge and also um, it's also relevant a part of psychology in uh, this, uh, this element. Uh, and then I will have some question also for Flora. Yes, uh, definitely indeed. Uh, it's absolutely um, relevant also I have a psychology uh, as part of uh, your team. Personally, intentionally, we have got four psychologists, two clinical psychology and two social psychologists. And uh, why it is complex today? Because uh, um, today in designing a uh, thermostater or in designing, uh, for instance, uh, one of the beautiful cars, the example of uh, new cars that we've seen before, uh, uh, there are lots of technologies uh, included. Uh, there are lots of players, for instance, uh, included. For instance, um, uh, telco players and uh, other uh, typology of players. So it's quite hard to have uh, included only in one person all the knowledge needed to tackle this kind of complexity. So definitely a, pro a design project team nowadays is wider than in the past uh, due to the purpose and nature of technology. And... Uh, the ability to dialogue fluently with the diversity of sensitiveness, the diversity of vision, and having the capability to uh, set up a common vision and also set up tools to enhance the communication among different uh, point of view is vital. It's uh, absolutely essential. It's uh, one of the value that we might bring uh, um, in the, in the in the context of a project, let's say. Okay, thank you. And uh, Flora, Flora, what do you, what do you think about this dimension of conversation? How conversational design is uh, going uh, in uh, the field of uh, transportation design? So I've seen uh, the project of your students, and I really appreciate the project. And also, I I'm part of the faculty of the master, so some results to me are known. And also, uh, I seen a, a, re a real evolution about the process. So, if um, sometimes ago we were, we can say that uh, uh, maybe in a car design processes uh, there were, let's say, seventeen percent of uh, car design and thirty percent of use human computer interaction, human machine interaction, or what? How in the car design they call this kind of entertainment? I think that now the process is changing so much and the vehicle is becoming more interaction than, uh, let's say, technology. So how this topic is uh, dealing with uh, for, for the, uh, the car design, the, yeah, transportation design? Well, I think that, uh, okay, speaking about uh, the idea of multidimensional and, and multidisciplinary field, uh, car design is uh, a multidisciplinary field and uh, we see a lot inside also um, uh, the jobs. So well, the job description of, uh, of uh, car design, because uh, there is no 
a car designer, one typology of car designer. Uh, we have exterior, interior, product, uh, detail designer, uh, visual designer. So it's important also um, in, 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 uh, during, during the project, during the, uh, the design process to visualize in a good way the project. And in the last days, in the last years, uh, also user experience design and user interface design uh, is a designer that is inside is inside the team of uh, the teamwork uh, in uh, inside uh, the car companies. Um, uh, our master, and I think uh, okay, is also because he's of Politecnico di Milano highlight a lot uh, the idea of uh, speaking with uh, other um, other typology of professionists. For example, we are working a lot also with the uh, engineer that don't think about uh, the design as we think about the design, but uh, in some case, in uh, we need to um, uh, we need to be able uh, to speak and uh, to dialogue with all the uh, with all this uh, typology of uh, uh, of jobs and of uh, of um, uh, professional uh, inside. The, as we see during our presentation, uh, speaking about self-driving car, obviously the experience inside the car change because uh, you are no more just uh, a driver. You will be also as a driver. You can do some other things. Uh, you can be connected uh, not only with the for self-driving car, but also with the um, broadband of connection that we are living inside No, So you can be connected to uh, the the city you can be connected to your social experience um, so inside the team uh, that work on car design it's very important to collect and uh, to be able to um, speak with all of these new professional also inside the, the car design but it's something that I think in car design field is always uh, happening and the difference is what typology of proficiency are inside the team. But uh, in reality, it would be always a multidisciplinary field, car design. So now it's changing because UX design and user interface design is coming in. But it's something that uh, they are, it's, it's all a project done in group. It's not possible oh. to have something related just for two or one person. So you are completely on, on aligned so in this yeah. question because when the project become more complex, a uh, team is needed and also this Absolutely. Uh, multidisciplinarity is welcome and also is necessary. So I think all of you are aligned. I think there is an, uh, an interesting question from the, the audience, the, the, the panelists. Uh, they are highlighting something that we are missing. So I'm seeing a lot of transportation experience but what about driving experience? Isn't all of this automation killing the pleasure to drive? And which will be the future of uh, motorsport, sports car, and also all the drivers uh, who want, uh, who loves drive, like me and you, Flora. Also no, I love, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like future, to drive. So. <laughs> uh, no, no, but I think that the future will be different, it will be something related to the pleasure of, draw of uh, driving. So I like to drive, I like to drive also motorcycles. So <laughs> I know very well this uh, topic. Um, I think that we'll, uh, we will divide the two things. Uh, me because uh, you you don't you don't need yeah you um, drawing uh, sorry driving is something related uh, to uh, I I I already divided the two the two things uh, because for example I have the motorbike uh, but I don't use it uh, inside the city because I don't like because I know that. Uh, is not a good way of using a motorbike. So I like to use when I can really appreciate the pleasure of driving and not just to move. So if you want to move, that is the majority of idea of transportation, there will be uh, 
something related to the uh, autonomous car driving, something related to the sharing mode, something related to the, I don't know, uh, uh, the, yeah, the sharing mobility, the public transportation. Uh, when you when you need to drive at pleasure, you will drive uh, other other thing. Or maybe you will prefer there is a transition, no? The, in which we will have uh, something that is uh, full drive, uh, full a full drive car, self drive car, and something that is not. Uh, maybe you will prefer some level four. Uh, autonomous driving and not level five, for example. Maybe we will uh, increase the number of racetrack and we will drive in another for example. way. For example. fun and this can yeah. be more easy. But also, Antonio, what do you think about this? So what, which is your relation with the, the driving experience and which is your thought in relation to how this will evolve? Uh, dr driving experience, I think that uh, since a long time has been a Evolving because we're, at the moment we are not driving. Uh, yeah, we are, we are yeah, driving at home. So, <laughs> my wheelchair uh, from our desk. Uh, we have already in place a lot of uh, assistive technologies that, in a way, supporting us in driving our uh, cars, uh, our vehicles in general. So, we are now just facing a phase in which uh, we are. Uh, uh, raising the, the the bar and uh, evolving, uh, I, I'm not sure that uh, we are going to have a one size fits all in the future. I mean, some, starting from tomorrow or ten years, we are going to have uh, just autonomous cars, uh, or and that's it. I think that we are just uh, an, uh, uh, augmenting the, the the possible possible choices. So uh, in order to meet some. Uh, technology evolution and user behaviors evolution. So perhaps we'll, whether you are uh, uh, happy to have a very lazy afternoon moving from Milan to Rome, you might choose an autonomous driving. If you would love to, you know, to feel the, the groove and the pleasure of driving something else, I think that uh, you can do that. Just increasing the, 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 the choices instead of uh, replacing. Yeah, but also yeah, my... this... Sorry. Yeah. Go, 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 no, go. And you can be also, in reality, you need to think about being more inclusive also, no? Because, okay, when people know how to drive and when people can drive because, for example, they have the ability to drive, they can choose. But now there are category of people that can't drive, no? For example, because they can't, because they don't see, for example. So... Um, changing the technology can allow us to be more flexible also for people that uh, can't be really flexible uh, because they can't, for example, drive. So it's... Uh, yeah, this, this question of inclusivity and also open the opportunity to move around the city or maybe around the world for people that are impaired, it's relevant with new technology. So it's, it's, uh, it's a really good new challenge and new opportunity. But I think uh, there is a, a, a completely new mindset or is changing the mindset. So a lot of young people now have not drive license. So they are no more interested in driving because uh, as you say, we live in uh, uh, polluted and uh, small cities. And also this is not good for driving. So, and also this is not good for health. So they are more responsible also in terms of uh, sustainability. So these are relevant, relevant question for the, for the next uh, uh, future. So, um, Antonio, you developed a project uh, in relation to the two-wheel mobility and you say you develop, uh, okay, you are trying to patent, a, let's say, a new language. Um, I know that you cannot talk so much about this, but uh, what do you mean in terms of um, uh, relation? So, in this sense, the user will, uh, in the next future, drive the bike, or ride a bike, uh, or maybe also in the two wheel sectors, uh, they are moving in a, let's say, sort, sort of autonomous uh, driving systems. Mm, okay, Le let's try to phrase my answer in a very polite way. <laughs> no, I, I mean, uh, without revealing uh, a lot. No, no, I without think... unveiling what you, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. can uh, also stop, you can also skip the first part. No, 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 yeah. this is absolutely fine. I think that, uh, mm, is just my uh, opinion. Uh, at this moment, uh, 
the relationship be between uh, uh, scooters is very much related to, of course, uh, your uh, handbar and, uh, and the, the cockpit. Cockpit, which is a very, very tiny uh, screen, uh, which is not ideal, you know, whilst you are uh, uh, riding your scooter, there are lots of movements and uh, things like that that are not supporting you in a, having the better, uh, best experience with the, the information. So there are several other ways in which you can uh, reshape uh, this relationship with the scooter. And uh, we've got one and we have a codified one. Uh, so instead of uh, utilizing conventional uh, things that you can find on this place, we have uh, defined a new language to communicate between uh, uh, scooters and uh, drivers. and. Uh, this language is going to provide you more safety from the other side, uh, giving you more the joy of the ride because you can, uh, less, uh, you can be less distracted by you know, watching constantly yeah. the, 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 the screen and you can more enjoy the ride. So definitely. Good. Thank you. You, you, you are polite, but uh, something comes to my mind and also I have some vision. Uh... Sorry, I, I, I'm a bit designer, so sometimes I try to, to go farther. Uh, what, what, what about the, 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 the self-automation about the, the two wheels or two, three, um, let's say, new, 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 new motorbike systems? Uh, there's a lot of discussion also in this sector. Yes, but it's also quite con controversial because uh, there is also a lot of discussion with regards to the, the, the other type of interaction, or for instance, uh, haptic feedback as well as voice interactions. And uh, but uh, mm, most, there are always the 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 the, 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 the same constraints, uh, which are uh, you know regulation from one side. From the other side, the, the uh, maturity of uh, some technologies, and uh, uh, last but not least, uh, the, the, the user behavior evolution. At the moment, the question would be: Are to scooter uh, are uh, scooter riders uh, happy to you know <laughs> to, to, to don't to, ride <laughs> to be driven instead of drive to not drive? I think that the reason why you uh, buy a scooter might be slightly different than the reason why you buy a car. So the motivational lever behind the two different needs uh, might provide us the, the right answer. Okay, so I think this is uh, good. So um, there's another question, some question coming from the, the, the panel. So in your opinion, which will be the next step in public transportation, especially here in Italy? So this is a good question, I think. Uh, because also public transportation is evolving in a sort of uh, small sizing and more frequent uh, event. And also the example that you shown as uh, uh, Flora Inon, uh, I know that you are back here. Uh, the, the Mercedes one is discuss a sort of, uh, let's say, it's a kind of public transportation or something that is a different way of transportation. So how the public transportation, in your opinion, will evolve? I don't know who wanna answer, so feel free to. I don't know, Elon, if you are able yes, I'm, to. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I had to leave the office because they are sanitizing, so I had to move, uh, but I'm still connected, so. So now, now you are not sanitized. Uh, yeah, exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I. We, I, we stay uh, longer just because we don't need the shower after, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I absolutely agree with you, Venancio. I think uh, public transportation, um, in a way, is uh, also making this transition into this uh, smaller sized uh, people mover and, uh, and sharing mobility. So I think uh, we will have still, of course, uh, bigger public transportation like uh, trains and buses. But mainly, I think in city centers, uh, people will use more uh, smaller transportation uh, devices uh, that will be completely autonomous and uh, let us not forget uh, that we will start uh, soon I guess to to see uh, also flying vehicles like drones that uh, move people yeah. around so this will be the next level I'm sure yeah we, we, we need to, to to make a motorway for drone in the next future so this is another question because yeah. 
<laughs> now so the regulation is clear, but the, later on, when the, the number of vehicles will increase, there will be a lot of uh, trouble with this uh, question. Yeah. So maybe the people that want to drive can uh, learn to fly instead. Yeah. <laughs> so, Antonio, I, I, I have the perfect question for you. I would like to ask, what about the affordability? So do you think these smart cars will be a product for everyone or they will be purchasable cars only for rich people? So uh, the, here there is affordance in one side. So and also... Uh, yes, you, you defined affordance. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that that was one of my key learnings uh, of the journey that we have been doing uh, on this project. Uh, it was uh, the, the inclusion, of the, the inclusivity of our transportation. And uh, it depends on the, the system. You know, as I told, shared with you during the, um, uh, my talk, uh, the automotive uh, system, ecosystem, uh, is going to be disrupted. And uh, we are going to, well, we have seen uh, lots of um, uh, car uh, 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 companies that are uh, reshaping their uh, alliances. And uh, they uh, should generate also new revenue streams. For instance, uh, as you have seen, uh, Tesla is providing a, a future as a subscription. For instance, yeah. you might have an autonomous uh, car capability just by subscribing the service uh, monthly, uh, monthly fee. And uh, perhaps we might have also a uh, subscription model that might allow everyone to, to, uh, to afford and, and uh, one of these cars. The same that we have seen also for, uh, for other products, uh, also smartphones, there are uh, the most popular and most iconic brands that are uh, making their products very inclusive for several standpoints, uh, um, not only for physical and cognitive standpoint and cultural standpoint, but also in terms of uh, economical standpoint, providing uh, several models with different features and also different form to have a smartphone. You can just pay also 10, uh, 10 uh, or 20, uh, euro per month so, uh, and you can own an, uh, a smartphone so i think that yeah. it's just a matter of finding the, the, the right uh, agreement uh, with the new ecosystem uh, that uh, we are going to see in the car uh, scenario yeah the question is uh, the servitization so this kind of vehicle maybe is not correct to to own the vehicle but maybe you need only to use the vehicle so this is the the, the changing also in the mindset that we were discussing. So if you can have a vehicle that comes uh, to your home at the time that you need it, what, what, what you need more. So uh, Aisha, the, the, the next future would be also the terms of, uh, let's say service society and also an evolution in the relation between uh, user and uh, vehicles. Uh, other also question? now, also now it's like this because uh, I I am really thinking about not to buy another car. Living in Milan uh, is something uh, that you can think about using all, only the for also now only the sharing uh, yeah. mobility. Yeah, but we we are strange user, Flora. So uh, yeah, I no. think <laughs> when, when you talk about outside Milan, the, the situation is really different. So yeah, also, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because uh, Europe and Italy are really, uh, let's say, peculiar for this kind of uh, evolution of services. But uh, all over the world, uh, let's say, the ownership, the vehicle, and the value of the vehicle remains. It's true, and, it's true. Uh, yeah, so we need to yeah, think yeah. in a global perspective and also. Uh, Antonio showed us uh, how these projects are now globally intended. So three groups spread ahead in all over the world, discussing about the same topic for one uh, brand, uh, big brand, but also something that is, uh, let's say, crazy in terms of uh, uh, effort today, no? because we were thinking about something that were developed locally and maybe used globally. Now we are researching globally. To, to produce something and then maybe we don't know where it's produced and uh, where it's used. So this is good. Uh, if there are other questions, we are here. Okay. Uh, since we are thinking about cars and transportation as a service and not so much as a product, how will autonomous transportation shape the city? What change will this imply in uh, regards parking spots? 
maybe we will not have a parking spots because we are uh, moving uh, or we, we don't have the car that is uh, stopped. I don't know. I can I say no. no. Yes, I, I agree, Flora. I think uh, we, we will need less and less parking spots, actually, because uh, we will only use the car to, to move and then the car will continue for the next passenger, probably. Uh, I guess we will start to see more hubs uh, from for moving from one means of transportation to another. Uh, so we, we will be in constant moving. Uh, the cars will will be in constant moving, and um, and I think I think this is a plus for the cities to 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 be clean of 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 parked cars, which is actually also um, you, you know it, it's kind of a shame to see. Uh, a, a produced object with which we put so much uh, materials, uh, resources, and energy into producing, and it's just sitting there in the city for most of the time, not used. You know, so I think this is a, a great thing that uh, cars will be shared, will be co in constant moving, and the streets will be free from them. Yeah, the question. This, this is a really, uh, let's say, visualized also in uh, many movies and also some books. I had a good suggestion from a, a book from, uh, uh, let's say, called Un Attimo Prima, it's only in Italian, but by De, o De Otto, and he described this next generation society for some different questions. So the economical value is changing, so your health becomes your economy. So this is some mindset changing, but also the transportation were continuous and were not affecting the, the, the life of the people because uh, it was autonomous, and safe at all. And also, you know that exactly from one point to another point is the time that you need because there's always uh, a means of transportation for you and you get the point easily. So uh, I think there are big changing also in the, in the society and, and we are designer, we need to make this changing also desirable and also usable. So for this reason, user experiences become more and more interesting uh, in terms of, uh, uh, let's say also social value today, no? Antonio, any? No, no, yes, I just wanted to, to perhaps, perhaps uh, provide you a new lens because we were talking about uh, auto, uh, autonomous car or car in general. So we were talking about the drivers, but what about uh, pedestrian? Because uh, <clears throat> I tell you a story. When I was living in London, close by my home, uh, there was an, an uh, area of London, close by the east side of London, in which uh, um, they were experimenting autonomous cars. And uh, the first thing that I observed was that uh, the roads, uh, the way in which the roads were uh, designed was completely different. You know, at the moment on the roads, we have a blank uh, line, uh, which is a kind of uh, the confidence that you have between you and cars. When you see cars driven by humans, you need the uh, few centimeters of confidence to feel safe. Yeah. What if a car is going to be driven by a no human? Do you need more confidence? The first thing that I noticed there in London was that uh, there were kind of two meters between uh, you and autonomous car. Because at the moment, uh, perhaps uh, uh, we need uh, to reach a cultural acceptance and confidence before uh, reducing uh, the, the, the the lines. So I think that uh, if uh, it comes the time to have an autonomous car uh, more uh, 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 as a live stream uh, uh, product, uh, I think that we need to start also to think how to uh, reshape the confidence, the trust between uh, pedestrians, citizens, and those cars. Yeah, but this is, this is a process that is uh, now happening in uh, many cities around, all around the world. Maybe Paris, uh, they made the 30 kilometer zone or a 15 kilometer zone where the, 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 the path away for the car were reduced and also everyone was pedestrian side. And uh, so the car are external object. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is a question and a process that maybe will change in, be in, uh, in a better way our society. And also our aim is because we, if we work a bit, maybe we are safer and uh, also in a healthy situation. So I think this, this is a, a matter of attitude. Uh, so we need to, to, to see what, what will be, but also when we design, we need to think about this. Uh, 
I think I, to, um, I just oh, wanted okay. to integrate something uh, about what Antonio said, which I completely agree uh, about this confidence. Uh, I just wanted to add that it's really interesting also that now we are used to have, uh, you know, this uh, place for pedestrians and then we have uh, the parking space and then we have the lanes and we have uh, uh, lanes going one way and lanes going the other way. Uh, actually, when we will have automated uh, cars driving, uh, the whole discussion of lanes, uh, so we already said that we can lose uh, most of the parking space, but also lanes uh, can be really dynamic, you know, because if we need more lanes going one way or more lanes going the other way, and cars can get much closer to one another. So uh, actually the city regains much of its space and it, and it could be a dynamic discussion, you know, so we can have more space for people or more space for cars based on the need. Yeah, yeah, this is this is true. Uh, I think this is also connected with uh, another question that comes that connect all of this. Uh, let's say uh, thinking within uh, the the idea. So the coronavirus uh, uh, influenced our way of working. So the smart working we know uh, this new way for, of working will influence the transportation feed. So uh, I think, in my opinion, yes. But what what do you think about this? Yeah. Sorry, is, uh, was that for me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know for the, the ones that want to answer. So. Okay. Uh, well, a good question, I would say. Uh, um, not sure that uh, someone might have the answer now because this situation is changing and reshaping uh, everything. But uh, it could be both. It could, it could reduce the, 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 but also it could uh, increase the, the use of cars because uh, due to the fact that uh, you can uh, work remotely, Perhaps you can uh, move around more frequently. No? Yes. You can work from different places uh, during the entire uh, year. So, Actually, you yeah, can work maybe... also in the car. You can work by, yeah, exactly. while, while moving. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I agree. I agree with but you. But I agree with Antonio that nobody knows. But I think it's interesting because uh, already now you can see uh, cars on the market with UV sanitizing light. Uh, in the smart concept that we saw before in the presentation, there is already, uh, it was before the pandemic, they already uh, put uh, hand sanitizers in the entry of the car. So uh, because it's uh, thought to be a shared mobility, they already put the, the, um, the sanitizing for, the, for your hands uh, for people. So um, I, I think um, uh, definitely it's, a, it's an interesting evolution that we will see, but um, I, I think uh, mostly um, yeah, pandemic will not be here to stay, but it's something that uh, now we are considering, of course, while we design the cars and while we use them, of course. And change our thinking about work and change our living because it's so, so long that uh, all uh, people in the world are thinking and are doing something different uh, now. And I think it, it all connects uh, to the discussion that Antonio said before that I completely agree how uh, design becomes um, so interdisciplinary. You know, so it's so complex. The reality is so complex and changing co constantly that you must have uh, a lot of actors and psychologists and scientists uh, active in the design discussion. This is exactly the point. Yeah, I think uh, okay, the new future is is, connect, is is connected with this kind of uh, evolution of product, but not only uh, product, but also it's the society, is the you, how you live. So. Uh, many, many research today discuss about this uh, new role of design that is, uh, uh, let's say, not only for people, but for the humans uh, and how the humanity will evolve. So this is a way that also we need uh, to consider. There's, there's, a la there's one last question, I think. I don't know if it's the last one, but one of the last. Uh, shall we consider the possibility to can war inside an hypothetical autonomous car? This is a strange question, and also I don't know if I well understood the, the, the reason why. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know uh, what was the meaning of the question, uh, 
but it makes me think about Melanie, one of the can you, Melanie. Can you maybe explain better the question? Ah, work. <laughs> ah, work. <laughs> okay, work. work yeah, work. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Sorry, but <laughs> was intending work. Oh, why? Work? <laughs> But actually, one of the uh, really um, hot uh, issues in in now in autonomous driving and, and the fact that the car is becoming a technological digital object is uh, a lot about um, cyber security. Actually, so that's uh, this is what I was thinking about the question. So um, there's a lot of issues uh, to 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 solve before we can really uh, get to this this uh, future of autonomous driving. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the, the cyber security and the ethical aspect and all this element uh, will be also another relevant uh, topic on the on the next future. So um, uh, this is a question that we need to deal with, and also we need also to let's say uh, leave the, the user decide what uh, how to where to go and how to go. So there's a there's a sort of uh, um, it's it's a little movie for baby uh, Hot Wheel City because it names Hot Wheel City. If you have uh, let's say ten minutes or seven minutes, uh, please go to the movie and they this they uh, describe it in one little movie that is available on Netflix. I uh, you know uh, all these situations. So the movie started with um, a really polluted and uh, cities where people uh, takes two hours to go to work in the morning. A uh, lot of injury, and then a man comes from the 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 the, the, the earth, and with a big G here, and uh, make all the the cars autonomous, but only five guys with the hot wheel don't uh, made part of this party. And in the night, he decides to use all the car, fighting with this kind of uh, all uh, so so hot wheelers. And this shows to the to the to the babies this kind of uh, let's say black mirror effect. So if you have time this weekend, you can also smile a bit about this because reflecting on the message is a message given to the child, and is a message given with uh, something that is almost natural. So my son said, it "Will be interesting if someone will drive for me," but he, he like to drive a motorbike. So this is crazy situation. So. Uh, I think the next future that will be more, uh, let's say, social and human question than, than product question, because the product will be more intelligent and also the designer will have more opportunity to work with. And also another question will be when the product will disappear because uh, someone is thinking about, let's say, embedded technology on humans, no? like... Uh, 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 yeah, cheap the, and the uh, yes, skin, uh, stuff exactly. like that. So I don't know, but okay. So guys, uh, I think now we are really a bit late. So we are two minutes after eight. So it was really interesting this evening discussing with you and uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure. And also it's an opportunity to have this uh, multidisciplinary conversation. So we need to discuss how to join our effort also in terms of uh, communication and uh, discussion. Uh, the last question, this is really the last. Uh, if the car is becoming a technological device that captures a huge amount of personal data, how can we ensure car customers that data are kept safe? I think that this is the perfect example of what does it mean in user experience. Because user experience means also understanding uh, with the clarity uh, what about my data, having a full control of data and having awareness of the Topology or experience you are going to face, and uh, what would be the, the consequence? As you mentioned before, uh, security, transparency, and privacy are going to be uh, absolutely essential for uh, connected cars for several obvious reasons. And but I think that these issues is uh, the same uh, when it comes to the time to to subscribe any kind of service, even just your, simply your email or your social networks. So yeah, we, we, we are used to not read. So maybe <laughs> kind of object we will be more, we will pay more attention in uh, our uh, safety data are used. 
we need uh, to have more feedback also about yeah. that uh, maybe yeah yeah we need to design this kind of interaction also the uh, make the the, exactly. the the object telling you what is doing or what, which kind of yeah. data you grabbing and also this is the future so also in, embed this on design also antonio we developed the research together and we started uh, telling that the first things is ethic so exactly. uh, and then conversation and then uh, uh, let's say culture and then aesthetics so i think this is this is a good good way to close and also to highlight again the, the value of design for the next generation user and also the next generation product and services so thank you everyone and uh, I think uh, this was a really good talk and I hope to have uh, soon another one. Uh, the question and our answer is gone. And uh, <laughs> <I will remember> <laughs> <laughs> to the ones that are interested here, there are the link for our master. Thank you to our students. And also uh, thank you, Inon. Thank you. Thank Flora. you very much. It was a real